I suppose if we had Jeff Halfley here and we asked him about Wisconsin, it would be a hard question for him other than film study. He's never really played them here in the last five or ten years. But you've lined up against them at your previous school any number of times. Without giving away how you guys are going to defend them, just what makes them so difficult with what they do to defend and why are they so effective with what they do? Well, and the first thing on that uh, with uh, Wisconsin, I, I grew up there, and I mean, I was born and raised uh, watching the Badgers. And uh, these, uh, the one thing, uh, they're they're very well coached. Uh, this is a very very good coaching staff. They do a, a outstanding job. They recruit big, strong players up front uh, for their system. Um, and now they've got some great skill also with it. So, um, you know, they're just a very, very talented team and uh, and very well coached team, and they'll play extremely hard. I don't want to say he's better than anybody else they've had at quarterback because it's all relative, but it seems like he gives them a little bit more of a dimension, running the ball and throwing the ball than maybe some of the other guys they've had in the last five or ten years. Yeah, I mean, he's he gets better every week too, and uh, he's a very he's a very talented quarterback, and uh, you know he's he's a, a person we're going to have to definitely deal with. Uh, third row, right, Rob. Greg, you came here um, knowing it was a first year coach that you're going to be working under. A, did that give you any hesitation at all? Uh, and B, how have you seen Ryan Day evolve from the day you got here to where he is? I assume there's been some growth. Uh, and the first question, no, there's there's no hesitation whatsoever. Uh, secondly, um, how has he evolved? I mean, I don't know how he's evolved. He's just good. He's really good. You know, I mean, he comes in every day. I don't care who we're playing, where you are in your season, it's the same guy and expects us to do a great job. He does a great job. He's, uh, he's very, very true to his players. He expects his players to continue to be great character, great in the classroom, and great on the football field. And he demands that, and uh, nothing's changed, you know. And from the first day uh, till now, I mean, he's doing a tremendous job. How and about a comfort level, though, I assume in any line of work, the first first day is a little tougher than, you know, six Comfort years. level for... For him, in terms of just what you see. Here. I don't see any, I, I, I don't see any difference from the very first day till now. I mean, he goes about his business and does what a great head football coach does. Front row right, Austin? Great. You, guys, row. you guys Sorry. obviously, you know, did just fine stopping the run on Friday night without Baron Browning. It, when he's back and healthy, what does he, what is he doing well? How does he help you guys? Well, Baron Browning's a, a, a outstanding athlete. He's very, very strong. He's got experience. Uh, he plays extremely hard. I mean, he does what a great linebacker or, or a very good linebacker is expected to do. And, and uh, you know, he's you know, he's a very big part of our, our defense, you know. As far as the run, you know, uh, I don't. I don't know that it had anything to do with somebody not being in there or somebody being in there. You know, uh, there was a number of little things, and it that that is not acceptable. You know, yeah, I, I, we don't. We all know as a defense that that we don't want to give up yardage like that on a run. That's not our. That's not our deal. That's not our backbone. But what happened is a number of of communication things. It was just small things, little things all the way through that are definitely be corrected. And. Uh, you know, it didn't have anything to do with personnel. It didn't have anything to do, you know, I mean, could have been the calls. Could have been me making the wrong call, you know, that kind of thing. But it's, uh, um, you know, I, 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 that's something that we will definitely correct, and they know that. I wasn't suggesting anything was wrong with 3.3 yards per carry, but you guys weren't weren't happy on Friday night with the run? Well, you know, anytime, anytime, I don't care if they rush for 60 attempts, you know, we have goals. You know, we have goals, and uh, I'm not going to say what those goals are because I don't want it on somebody's uh, somebody's bulletin board. But I, I do, I do know that that the backbone of any great defense is stopping the run, and our kids have really done a great job of that, and will continue to. Front row, uh, middle, Dave from 24/7 Sports. Greg, Michigan has a very good defense. You would know something about that. Um, as you're uh, studying film on Wisconsin, they are really able to do almost whatever they wanted to do against Michigan's defense, so they called the dogs off. As you're studying film, what did you see, again, without giving too many secrets away, what did you see that Wisconsin was able to do so effectively against Michigan? 
Well, I don't know if it's against them. Uh, I just I'll say what Wisconsin has done effectively all year, you know, and uh, that's run the football, uh, execute the play action passing game off of the run. And it's the same thing. Anytime a team has the ability to run the football, you know, with some success, now that opens up the play action passes and it opens up the, the next phase of it. And uh, they've done that against everybody they've played against, you know, that they, they, they establish the run and therefore you're going to see some, you know, in their scheme of things, they're going to get people more open. Chase Young, we knew he was a great player. I, I didn't know personally he was such a great leader till this year. Is that something you noticed right away about him when you got here? Has he kind of grown into that role? Or well, he, he, he's done such an outstanding job of, of doing what Coach Johnson has, has brought him along to do from the day. I hadn't known him when he was younger other than recruiting him. But uh, you just see him every day get better and better. And with that comes confidence and with that comes belief in what we're asking him to do and he's you're right he's becoming a great leader and I think that comes with confidence and success Taylor had I think 16 total receptions his first two years and he's already matched that this year just what added dimension does that bring as far as trying to defend um, him and them well I mean you got to be very disciplined I mean you're right I again when when a running back has 2,000 yards and you know, your first thought might be, yeah, boy, you got to load up and we really have to do this and we have to do that. Well, anytime you do that, you take away from one part, you're going to be open to the next. And again, it goes back to what I mentioned earlier. They're a very, very good coaching staff, you know, and they, you know, they see that. They see that, okay, this, this guy has hurt some people running the football and therefore this part of it should be off of that. You got some, um, some Younger defenders in this game, the linebackers, uh, uh, Kayvon and um, Gant, oh. and, um, yeah, and uh, some of the DBs getting interceptions, guys off the bench. Just what impact does that have, not just for them, but potentially for this whole defense? Well, and, and that that's a great that's a great question because if there's anything that our coaching staff, and there's a lot of things we're very very proud of, but the thing that we were really really proud of and have been throughout this year is that. Late in the game, when we have had, you know, a chance to be ahead, the players that have gone in have treated it like it's 0-0. Zero, zero. And, and we've made a big deal of that. And, if, and, and the guys that went in, we don't look at it as backups you're in now. We look at it that you've worked really, really hard and you've earned the right to play now. And when you go in there and you represent Ohio State University, now we expect you to play at a certain level, and they've done that. And that was probably one of the, 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 the things that we're the most proud of is how those young guys played. Third row left, Dan from 11 Warriors. Great. You, you guys put in Josh Proctor, Amir Reef, Jocelyn Wynn, all in some different roles in the first half of Saturday's game. Kind of what are the different things that each of those guys bring that had you guys kind of working them into different packages? Well, they all, they all had different roles. Like, you know, one of them might be a better pass defender. Another one might be uh, a good pass defender, but also good size to play on the run. And another one might be all run, you know. And so, therefore, we, you know, in certain situations, it gave us the ability to, to be able to substitute people in. And, and um, it was good for them, and it was good for us. You've been asked about Brendan White a few times, but going into the year, a lot of people thought he was going to kind of be that guy who would play that bullet spot. Those guys got in the game over him. Just where is Brendan White kind of stack up in front right now? Well, again, you know, everybody keeps bringing, you know, that. Again, uh, Jocelyn Wint played three plays. Brendan White played 17 or 18. You know, it's the packages. And therefore, you see that when Brennan went in, he, he had a very good game. He did some very good things, and so did so did Jay Wint. You know, and it's packages. It's different packages that the guys who have worked extremely hard to have the opportunity to play in. So you view it like instead of a depth chart, like one guy's ahead of the other, more like this guy's better in this different situation. Right. We have that ability to do that. You know, that to be able to plug people in, to be able to do what's best for them and their abilities and what's best for our, our defense. Second row right, Tony. Greg, the, um, 
you mentioned the play action pass that is dangerous from Wisconsin. What kind of, uh, I guess, luxury or what does it do for you when you've got three lockdown corners against that type of offense? <laughs> well, it, it, it really, you know, to have our corners is a blessing. You know, there's no doubt about it. I mean, you'd really be, really be nervous if a guy's a, a really good, really very successful at running the football, and then all of a sudden, the next thing you, you, you do is you don't have guys that can cover one on one. You know, that's a, that allows you to do a lot more things, and uh, to be able to have our, have our secondary, do what they have done, is a real blessing as far as what we were able to call. And when. When you're in off coverage, does that make them more susceptible to that, to the play action as opposed to if they're just up there in press man, not worried about the quarterback per se? Yeah, it is. But I mean, I think the biggest, you know, the biggest thing that goes with the coverage part of it is the great job that our defensive line has done putting pressure on the quarterback. You know, you can have the the best corners in the, in the world. If you don't get a pass rush, they're not going to look real good at the end, and, and and vice versa. You know, you can be a really really good pass rusher, but if you can't cover, you have a problem with that also. And that's it's been, you know, I think I, I think our D line and our secondary have worked really well together to help each other. You know, and that's been that's been a blessing. When you're game planning for an offensive player other than a quarterback where they have a, their best player as a skilled guy, is there a balance between, okay, this guy's going to get his numbers or like maybe wanting to take him away and force him like other guys on the offense to have a breakout game? No, no I don't think you do that. I don't, I, I don't think we ever say we're going to give this up to take this away. We, we don't do that. You know, and I, again, it goes back to the players you have. I think. I think if you said that to our players, they'd look at you, coach, what do you mean? You know, I mean, we believe that our front will stop the run and our linebackers in, 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 in secondary will put pressure and we'll, we'll, we'll do our job that way. And it's, a, it's an entire game. It's, you know, you have to be sound at everything you're doing because in this league, if you don't, you'll get exposed. And uh, that's where our players have done a really good job of that. I know you'd love to win. Players are a lot more important, by the way. <laughs> you know. Greg, I know you'd love to win every game 52-3, but how much excitement is there when you know you've got this kind of game this week after all of these blowouts? Is it, is it different? Oh, it's really – I mean, this is different because it's the eighth one. It's the next one. It's just really, really important to our guys. Uh, you could feel it the, when we all got together uh, on Sunday. Um, they all know this is this is as big as it gets right now, and uh, there's there's great excitement. You know, I mean, uh, you know, we we have goals. Our our players have worked extremely hard from the t start of winter conditioning to everything that they have done up to this point right now. This is the next one, and we don't want anybody to take away from what they're trying to achieve. And so this is the next team. And they're a very good team. And uh, so this is our next challenge. And one of the things that separates this Wisconsin team from past ones, they have a big time wide receiver, Cephas. How much pressure does that put on a, on a defense? Well, yeah, anytime you have a very, very skilled wide receiver like they have, but they got more than just him. I mean, he's really good, but their tight end is a very good receiver also. Uh, and so you've, you now have offensive line, you've got a good tight end. And you've got a good wide receiver. We've got a very good defensive line, a very good secondary, and we're very excited about this game. Fourth row left, uh, Andy from the Landry. Yeah, Coach, um, with Tommy Tokyo, yeah, we've heard for a while now that he's the strongest player on the team. But as the season gone, has gone on, it seems he's getting a bigger role and a, he's, getting, he's making more plays. What other part of his game has really come along as well? Well, I think it's like – all of the defensive line, all of the linebackers, all of the secondary guys, I think you're trying – the way they practice, and that is very – that's very important. That if you came out and watched our guys, the way they practice, they're going to get better. And Tommy is one of them that practices extremely hard every snap. And when you practice like that and you're taught by Coach Johnson like you're being taught – 
and then you get the opportunity to play, that's what happens. And we're really, really proud of him. I'm really proud of me because here's a young man that, that just continually works as hard as he can, keeps his mouth shut. When he, if he plays seven plays or he plays 18, 20, 25 plays, goes as hard as he can go. And that's kind of the stereotype of the guys on a defense that, that's fun to coach. Wisconsin always has great running backs um, throughout the years. It's like when Mike Leach's teams always have a great quarterback. Um, but with Jonathan Taylor, is there something about him that's different than some of the guys that have run through there in the past? Well, first of all, I don't know if people realize that I think he ran a 10-4 uh, something. Uh, he was the state champ in uh, New Jersey in the 100. He may not look like that all the time until you see him break and see somebody try to catch him. The other thing, he runs extremely uh, physical. And, and to me, the thing that, that I've watched on him is he's one of those guys that he looks like he stopped and all of a sudden he comes out of the pile, and which shows he has great balance. And uh, he's just a great running back. I mean, he, you don't get 2,000 yards rushing in the league and the conference that we play in without being an outstanding back. Thanks for watching. Subscribe below to get the latest videos from Letterman Row. We got Letterman Live, we've got the practice report, we got rapid reaction. Hey, and you know we got Buck IQ with Zach Bourne. For sure. We got recruiting breakdowns with Berm. We got whatever you need. Ohio State football and Ohio State Athletics, we've got you covered here at Letterman Row.